Welcome, everyone, to Midday Magazine for the September 8th, 2023. Have your host, James J. Bailoff, behind the mic. At 3.30, we're going to welcome in our good friend, Connie tomsky Fayville, M- uh, FRM president. We'll talk a little bit about FRM Fest and looking forward to getting into that. Right now, our wonderful, great friend, Madison Rafter, executive director of the Southwood County Maine Society, joining us right now. Madison, how are you? I'm good. How are you? It has been so long since we had a chance to talk. It's been, no. no. You know. <laughs> we, we were just hanging out yesterday as Madison joins us every Thursday in the 9 o'clock hour with our pet of the week a big thank you for to you for that uh we appreciate it and we appreciate what you do in this community madison i want to thank you and your team right out the gate for the impact that you have on this community and the work that you guys do um if you didn't care about animals you're out there listening you don't uh, care about animals don't have any interest in the humane society or anything like that uh it affects you still even you it affects the economic impact uh what it does on uh on cities and communities is it only a search engine away from seeing the stats that that can do uh communities that don't have shelters or have poorly run shelters to be honest um their taxes and the different things that they're you know a property value all of these things add up they're all connected uh here in this area we are very proud very lucky to have a very well run humane society um and and just a big thank you to uh, for that from the community we appreciate it well thank you we got a couple events that we can show our appreciation at uh coming up this month it's a busy month for you guys it is busy It kicks off this week and tomorrow from 10 to 3 over at the uh, Southwood County Park Red Sands Beach and Closed Stone Shelter with Rockin' the Shelter. For those that haven't heard yet about this, uh, Madison, let's tell people what it is. Yeah, so we have some volunteers of ours that wanted to host a fundraiser for us. Um, They've been a big support for us for years. They have been out at the shelter. Our volunteers are the ones who do our lovely gardens Mm. that we have in front of the building Mm. and have made our gardens look phenomenal. Um, With that, these volunteers wanted to host an event and they wanted to get it involved in the community so kids can be involved. Everybody can kind of come to this because we do have these events, but not all of our events have it where all of like all age groups can come to mm-hmm. and this is more particularly on the kids where it's bring the kids get the kids out have fun that kind of thing um, our volunteers have done just a phenomenal job with setting up this entire event they are doing raffle baskets there are kid games there is face painting they are doing just crafts and everything and so far it's just going to be a phenomenal phenomenal event um all of that is great i agree with all of that i feel like you might have missed one of the headlines though clifford the big red dog yes Clifford the big red dog is going to be there that's awesome <laughs> we have our mascot um he volunteers and comes to all of our events and he has just been a hit with all of the kids and he has different costumes and everything that he can bring along but clifford has just been a big hit and clifford's one we're just going to continue to bring along very smart very smart boo um um, I, I like the idea of uh, having as many of these events as we can for our, our Humane Society. I think it is really cool that a, a volunteer came up with this and got this going. Yep. Um, I think I hope that's inspiring to people out there to do further things like this, whether it's with our Humane Society or other nonprofits, that you have that kind of power in you, that you can make these kind of things happen. I imagine it starts with a simple idea, and then look where we are, where tomorrow it's happening. Yep, and again, this is the second year that they've done it. The first year was an absolute blast they did a fantastic job i want to say they raised a little over three thousand dollars if i remember correctly i could be wrong on that but they did great with it they did get rained out that day so of course they had to scurry and get a bunch of tents that day but that's why they have it at the red sands beach this year in the enclosed area just because if it does decide to rain tomorrow then they are good and they don't have to worry about scrambling for tents (laughs) I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a weather nerd, uh, but I've, I've been even more so the last couple of days because tomorrow is such a big day in this area. Yep. Uh, beautiful tomorrow. It's supposed yes. to be beautiful. Uh, nice. That's what we've been keeping our fingers crossed yes. with. Everybody cross your fingers out there. Everybody <laughs> knock on wood, cross your fingers, whatever you got to do. So we're excited for it. It's going to be a great event. We will try to bring a shelter dog out and come hang out for the day. So we're very excited for it and it'll be a good event. When it comes to something like this, Madison, um, uh, what is the impact on the Humane Society it can have? Yeah, so events like this, it gets our name out in the community. Mm -hmm. It's people who have such a big passion for the shelter and such a love for the shelter are wanting to do something for us because we do so much for the community. Mm -hmm. When it comes to our stray animals and our surrenders and everything else that we handle, they have such a passion that they're like, oh my goodness, we need to do something for them. And that just kind of shows our community that we do have people that really care and can we get more people that want to do more for the shelter 
Um, we'll get more into this a little bit later if we have more uh, enough time. But I um, I know just volunteering and working at shelters a little bit myself, nowhere in the position that you've been in or anything. But I, I know how much it meant when people would come in and say thank you or, um, you know, some of the stories we would hear. Uh, the, the shelter that I worked at in Santa Barbara, there were some people that would volunteer that had dogs that they had adopted from there. And they would tell me stories about, like, the, this was like the third dog they adopted or something. And they, it, uh, they grew up with their child or something. Thing. Like the stories, I, the millions and millions of stories that come out of shelters around the country, they're beautiful, they're wonderful stories, and they don't happen without people like yourself running these things. Mm-hmm. How good does it feel to see an event like this and, and see not only volunteers coming up with it, but the way the community responds, the support, those long days at the shelter? I imagine these are the things that help with those long days. Yes. Um, in the shelter environment, it definitely is a very mentally tolling job. Um, we have to deal with a lot of compassion fatigue and things like that because we do have to see the animals that come in that are severely malnourished or very injured or whatever the situation may be. Those are the days that really, really are hard on us. Mm -hmm. They're very mentally tolling. But when we have events like this, the community just wants to be able to be here and support us so that they make those hard days even better. To us, that's the world. It's one of those things when we get those adoption updates, when we get that community support, the people that come out, like when we have a low need of kitten food and or cat litter, and people will put out a post and we have them piling in the door that day. Just that community support just makes it worth it to know that what we are doing is worth it. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing Doing continues to drive us as shelter workers because we do have to deal with the hard stuff. But seeing that support is just fantastic, and it really is something that kind of helps balance that, I guess, in between of emotions. Mm-hmm. It's part of the reason why I bombard Madison with uh, squash uh, videos and stuff all <laughs> every once in a while and everything. Um, it's not just because I love showing the guy off. It's not, it's not that at all. It's a, um, I, I have a hyper empathy. I was diagnosed with that as a kid, and I, I had to be very aware of that growing up. And working in shelters, I, I don't think there's many experience, many times where I experienced it more mm-hmm. than in those. I, I know for a fact, because I've been in shelters, I couldn't do the job you do. Like, there, I, there's a lot of things I can do in this world. That is not one of them. I have such an admiration and respect for yourself and your team over there that do with the, I think, a term that uh, I hope people caught, the um, compassion fatigue. Uh, that That is a true thing, and mm-hmm. it, it's something that can really take a toll. All of the support, that's what helps that. There's not a lot of cures for something like that. That is one of the things that is a huge Band-Aid on something like that. It's also something, too, we like to send our staff to these conferences that do bring in speakers to talk about that compassion fatigue because it is something that when you're in this shelter world and you go 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 it's one of those things that sometimes you just like you need to have somebody else come from an outside source and kind of be like hey do you need to take a break Mm -hmm. is this something that you need to deal with and again we deal with it but again sometimes it is really hard to I uh, want to thank the sponsors, all the sponsors that got behind this and that are a part of this event. Again, Rockin' the Shelter is coming up. It is tomorrow from 10 to 3 over at Southwood County Park, Red Sands Beach. Be there. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good time. Uh, we'll meet you down there, everybody. This is going to be a lot of fun. Very excited. I wanted to get into this, too, with you. Uh, the 5K9 Walk Run coming up. Uh, that is Saturday, September 23rd, over at the uh, Southwood County uh, Red Sands Shelter House. Yep. Oh, yep. It's going to be over there. For, uh, registration starts at 8. The race itself starts at 9. Let's tell people about this one. Yeah, so our 5K9 Walk Run, we in past used to have it in May. Um, we did kind of push it off this year into fall just because it was something that there was so much going on. We pushed back our soup and snow sculpture, and we're like, you know what? Let's change it up a little bit yeah. this year. See how that goes. So we're really excited for this event you can walk it you can run it you can just jog it if you prefer Mm -hmm. you it is what you prefer you do not have to be a speed racer you do not have to be as slow as a turtle it is completely up to what you would like to do bring your pets along we have people in pests who have brought in their cats and strollers but anyway our walk run is just a fantastic event we have raffle baskets we have our t-shirts people can race and there's prizes for that and it's just overall a really great community event to just get out get active and just Hang out for the day. Yeah. Uh, I, real quickly, as a side note, I have to tell the audience, Madison has no notes. She does all this right at the top of your head. You're, I, again, I could not do the job you do. Um, 
there are going to be uh, pledge prizes? Yes. That sounds cool. Pledge prizes. So we have it where you can raise money for sponsorships in a sort. So you go out and raise money, and you are able to get prizes for this. Mm-hmm. So once you reach $100, you get a free registration. At, or is it 25 I could mm. be wrong. Um, see, I'm, I'm messing yeah. up there. Nah, see, um, I, 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 have said I don't. I don't know 100 percent what the categories are. I know there's yeah. a free registration for the walk run. I know that there is a free T-shirt involved. I know there's a free sweatshirts, and then the top tier prize is a two bedroom, two bath at the Kalahari for one night, Ooh. and that is for the top tier pledge. So if you raise the most money for the shelter in pledges, you can bring it the day of the event. You can drop it off the shelter. But if you have the most, you are able to win a two bedroom, two bath at the Kalahari for one Man, night. That sounds, that, that, that's a good enough reason right there. <laughs> let, let alone uh, all the good you can do by being a part of this uh, yep. for our Humane Society. That's fun. Uh, I'm going to have some of your guys' merch down there for sale. want to make sure to mention that. Anytime you can uh, advertise the Humane Society when you're walking around town or wherever you're taking these shirts, I have to say um, it's one of my favorite things about uh, supporting nonprofits is is the shirts. Because, for one, I work in radio, and this is how we get clothed. <laughs> uh, but but more and more, much more importantly, in this community, I love when I'm walking around, like uh, the shirt you gave me. Yep. Uh, I'm bopping around it. It, n- it never fails. I've, I've worn it like four times, and every time somebody will point and say, hey, Humane Society or something, you find like-minded people. You find people that are on the same page and, and in on this. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of a, a fun kinship. Yeah, I mean, at this point, since working at the Humane Society, I feel like the rest of my wardrobe of clothes, I don't touch. Like, they sit in my closet because all I do is wear shelter clothes yeah, at this yeah. point where I'm just like, we'll go out, we'll go out to dinner. And I'm like, uh, I don't want anything else. I'm just putting on a shelter yeah, shirt. Yeah, and that's yeah. just how it goes. It works. It, it really does too, uh, really does bring attention and awareness to the shelter, though, as well. They are cool shirts, they're great designs, and they're very comfortable. Um, but just as most importantly of all of that, the attention that you're able to bring. Not everybody can um, always put in money or buy, you know, supplies or anything for the shelter. But all of us can wear a T-shirt. Yep. All of us can be a billboard. You know, yep. a- a- it's another way of bringing attention and awareness to the good work that you guys are doing. Yep. I mean, T-shirts are the way. It's advertising in a sort. It's getting out there. People see T-shirts. I mean, I'm sitting in the line at the grocery store and I'm reading people's T-shirts because yeah. again, it is free advertising in a sort. With this uh, walk run coming up, uh, do people need to register for this? Yeah. Um, so with that, we did have pre-registrations for a t-shirt. The t-shirt pre-registration deadline did end already. Um, but with that, you can still register online at active.com. Otherwise, you can stop by the shelter and register. We also will have registrations the day of, if you would like, mm. as well. So if it's something that you want to wait to the day of because you're not sure on weather or you're not sure if you can make that date, show up the day of and we can register you. Um, and uh, again, registration at 8. The race itself will start at 9. And rain or shine, this is going on. Oh, yes. We've done it in the rain. We've done it in the sunshine. But we're hoping that it'll be a really nice day. Uh, and it, it's, uh, you know, uh, fingers crossed, again, uh, just like we were doing for this weekend yep. and everything. Uh, hopefully it is a great one, uh, especially because an event like this, uh, to show how important it is, other radio stations are sponsoring this, and we're still talking about it on our <laughs> station. That shows how much we love you guys. It shows how much we're back. Yeah, I'm well, joking. thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm joking, but it, it does give me a chance to mention all the sponsors. A lot of sponsors that are part of this. Big thank you to all of them, putting back into our community, putting back into our humane society. We appreciate our sponsors. They've done a great job for us, and we appreciate them. Both of these events are, are wonderful. They're unique and fun. Uh, a little different in the beginnings of them, where mm-hmm. one of them starts with a volunteer, another one kind of a, a staple uh, of, of the Humane Society. But it does get me thinking, if there's people out there listening, whether you are a business owner and you want to sponsor with the Humane Society, or you're just uh, a fan of animals, a fan of the Humane Society, mm-hmm. um, is this something that like I could, me and Seth come up with an idea? Yep. We come to you with it and maybe something can happen. Yeah, pretty much. If it's something that you have an event that you want to host or you want to be in a sponsor for an event, um, the sponsors, we do have a form on our website that you can fill out if you are interested mm-hmm. in being a sponsor. So there is a form online that if, hey, you know what, I really want to sponsor an event, there's a form that you can go and fill out online. Um, but if it's something that you want to host an event for us, all you have to do is come sit down. You can give me a call, shoot me an email, be like, hey,
hey, I would really like to do this. We can sit down, have a conversation. Um, it, the only thing is it would just have to be an outside fundraiser. There's not any funding that we are able to host into it. But if it's something that you want to host on your own, you are more than welcome to. We are more than willing to support it. We are more than willing to advertise for it. You just need to have a conversation with me and we can get that rolling. Uh, I am going to be uh, emailing you later today. My fur brother Sam and I have a band we started, Penguins in Planes, and we've been trying to find a good avenue to perform at. So okay. I'll be messaging you a little All bit right. later. Uh, there's better ideas. There's uh, much better <laughs> things that you can do. Um, when these events come up, we love talking about them. We love celebrating them and celebrating our shelter. Uh, we certainly appreciate every Thursday you joining us with our Pet of the Week. All of this is great to be able to bring attention to not only the shelter, but of course these animals and the work that you guys do with these animals. But all that being said, there's uh, certain things that even I uh, or many of our listeners wouldn't know. From your perspective, from your point of view, can we speak to how important these events are for the shelter? How much of an impact they have? Yeah, definitely. Um, with the shelter, we service about a thousand, if not more, animals a year. Um, and that's in between surrenders, that's in between strays, whether those strays stay with us or they get picked up. Um, we have to handle the dangerous dogs with the county. So if we are called by the court and they are ask us to hold an animal, we have to hold those dangerous dogs while they are pending court. We have to hold police impoundments. Uh, we handle hoarding cases, so when we get called out for cases, we have to go pick up those animals. So there's a lot that we handle that a lot of the community doesn't necessarily know. Some of them do, but they don't necessarily know all of it. Um, we have to assist when it's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, or 2, 3 in the morning when a dog's hit by a car and we don't have an owner. We have to go pick up those animals and run them up to Paw Health until we find owners. So we do our due diligence, especially when it comes down to strays, surrenders, anything like that, that we're trying to work with our communities for the best possible way for these animals as well as the people because when it comes down I'm sorry if my dog got hit by a car at three o'clock in the morning and I didn't know mm. but found out it was picked up by the Humane Society and taken to the vet clinic and they assisted with the aspect of making sure that my animal was okay I'd love that and oh. that'd be just something that was really beneficial to me that mm -hmm. we're able to offer these to our community to assist with these situations while we don't have a vet on staff we can't necessarily do all of the vaccines or do spay and neuter for the general public we still have the ability to do other things mm -hmm. it's something that we're we're looking into, but again, not something we can do right now. Um, I, all incredibly insightful points. Uh, I, I'm positive that you just uh, got some people some information that they did not have beforehand. Uh, and I'm really glad that you touched on something I wanted to get into, where how the Humane Society assists other organizations in this area, especially our police departments yep. and that. And we uh, have talked for years about how much is put on our police force and how many things that they uh, that really aren't their job, but is on their, t on their plate. Any assistance they can have, I think, is quite important and quite noteworthy. And to think of this, I don't think a lot of people connect the Humane Society with our police departments, but you mentioned the, the hit dog and these kind of situations, runways. This is something where, I mean, our, 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 I know darn sure that our police departments are awfully thankful for our humane societies. Yes. Uh, while many of them are great at what they, all of them are good at what they do, of course, uh, not all of them are, are animal uh, knowledge yes. and, and know what to do in these situations. This is where you guys come in so key to those situations. And I don't even feel like we're scratching the surface almost because there's so many things that... Um, that happen organically mm -hmm. that, that necessarily there isn't a, a you know a number for you know this is a this situation or whatever there's just stuff that happens that you can't really predict at shelters no. um and that's just a you know in in the general we're not even getting into the day and day uh, you touched on the fatigue uh the the mental fatigue that can be with that but certainly the um the importance for these animals mm -hmm. to to be treating humanely Yep. Um, that is important. That's not just important with the, the food chain or, or our community or anything. That's important on a, on a social level. That's yep. important on a, on a level going forward here as a society. Uh, we, we, for a long time, there are certain groups of people, we're talking about abused kids or wi abused women or, or animals or any of these things that were not brought the attention that they needed for decades. We're finally making this right. We're finally starting to get closer to it. We're not there yet, but we're getting closer to it. Yep. Um, bringing attention to these kind of things with our shelters is one of the ways we do that. Yep. 
I mean, again, like going back to the police department aspect of it, they do so much for our community. And when it does come down to animals, we get lots of calls from them because they're not necessarily handled in the aspect of how to yeah. handle them. They don't want to get bit. And I don't blame them, yeah. especially when it's an unfamiliar animal and they don't know how they're going to react. So we do get called out a lot with our police department. And it's something that we appreciate them reaching out because, again, we don't want that animal to have to bite them yeah. either. We would rather be called out to assist with a situation like that. Um, but they call us constantly for uh, different questions and they're like, hey, how do we go about this? And how do we do this? And our humane officers as well, we work with them very closely as well. And they've been phenomenal with their jobs and how they do it. So it's something that we appreciate the aspect that we're able to have a good relationship with them to continue to keep that going and to continue to be a service to our community. And uh, similar to how we thank these sponsors for putting their name and their time and energy and money into these events, uh, when it comes to our, our police departments and different organizations in this area, one of the things that I very uh, it makes my heart smile anytime I think about it. Um, when I met the I met the board at the family center and I'm emceeing the men in the kitchen event a couple of years ago and I really hadn't been in many family center events. I walk in and the first person I see is Mayor Blazer and then I see Andy Francis head of the rafters and I see Sheriff Becker and I see uh, 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 Captain Melvin from the police department and stuff and all these people on the same page. Mm -hmm. All these people believing that domestic violence shouldn't be happening in our community and we're all on the same page and these same faces I see with the shelter with the humane society events. Um, at this like-mindedness again going back to that kinship of oh you you get it you yep. get it the, going forward here we're all going to be on the same page we're going to do we're going to do good in our community with this and do right by our humane societies and our animals in our community um this i i I don't believe in a whole lot of things when it comes to uh, stuff that you can't put into science or math or anything like that. That's the way my brain works. But I do believe in karma. Mm -hmm. And what you put into this world, you get out. And yep. it's no different with an animal or a human being. Nope. I 100% agree. I mean, again, looking at our animals that we have, it's something that we have to be the ones to be there for them as well. They don't have a voice either. So I agree. It's something that, yes, what you put in is what you get out. But at least on our standpoint with the shelter, we have those animals that we have to be their voice as well. So they don't have the ability to speak like people do in our community. So how can we be their voice to also be their voice for the community? The um, uh, the website that you guys have up is just beautiful. It is running so good. We want to encourage people to check out that website, swchs.com, in part because uh, it's great and it looks really good. It's uh, You guys did a nice job with this. But also, this is another way to find out about things going on over there, to be able to donate at the Humane Society, maybe even finding some merch, uh, yeah. stuff like that. And you can check out uh, animals on there. You can even see our pet of the week on there. Yep. All of our animals are on there. We have it where we have some bonded pairs on there. We have our small animal. We have a bunny right now. But all of our animals get listed on our website. They're also available on our Facebook. We like to post on there and try to highlight them a little bit more there too. But you're more than welcome to check out our website. It's been two years in progress of trying to get that up to date. And we're very happy with how it looks. I uh, wanted to make sure to mention as well that when you go there, you can find a couple of things if you uh, have a missing animal uh, it's not a bad place to go to yep. uh, there's also lost dogs of Wisconsin I think is a good uh, Facebook pay, uh, group that uh, does good work there but uh, animal uh, reporting animal cruelty I think that I'm not sure if that's a new link on your website but I, I noticed that when the website the new one kind of came about and I really impressed with that I think that's it's not easy to put those kind of things on there but so vital so important too yeah it was on our website previously but it was, it was kind of okay. hidden and with a lot of the calls that we do get a lot of people like don't want to do it enough or they want to do it anonymously. They don't want to be involved in it because they don't want to report it, but they want to report it because it's something that frustrates them. So we did make a tab on our website so that it is something that's informational for the general public that if you don't feel comfortable calling and wanting to talk to somebody about it, here are your steps that you can take if it's something that you're seeing something and you're not okay with this. Is this something that we can go forward with and potentially get a call over to the police department to get in check with the humane officers? So it's something that we have on the website that hey, you know what, I'm not sure I want to call and ask any questions. There it is on the website for you, so it's something you can look into as well. Hmm. Uh, there's uh, Also, you can go there to find out more about the events Madison and I were talking about and to get involved with things over there. Uh, there's a bunch of great links, a bunch of great things for you. Be sure to check that out, swchs.com. Um, Madison, did you hear about this uh, police wrangling a runaway rabbit at a British Columbia train station? No, I did not. Okay, I'm just telling you the headline. you got to look into this. Okay. There's video of it. Uh, that little guy is, uh, I don't know uh, how, look at that little rabbit. I mean, that little guy somehow <laughs> bopping around in that train station. 
I'm not sure. He maybe just wanted to travel. I, I mean, I, it doesn't surprise me. I know up in Dane County, there was a wild tegu that gave the oh, police yeah. department a chase recently <laughs> within the week, last week or two. So, and I'm sitting there laughing because it's an exotic lizard. And I'm yeah. like, okay, that's a, that's uh, a fun time. <laughs> I, again, the importance of humane society. So when those kind of things can happen, being able to call somebody like Madison and everything comes real handy. Yes. Real handy. <laughs> Join us for Rockin' the Shelter tomorrow at the Southwood County Park, uh, Red Sands Beach from 10 to 3. This is a wonderful event, not only to uh, fundraiser and supply drive to help out our Southwood County Humane Society, but a chance for you and your family to have a good time. We're excited for it. Uh, this was fun, Madison. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you for having me. Again, you can find out more by going to their website, swchs.com. Be able to sh be sure to reach out to our Humane Society with any needs that you might have or anything you would like to do in this community. We'll come back with more Midday Magazine right here on WFHR, locally grown radio.